إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So last time we spoke about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the revelation and how Allah has appointed him as a messenger and we know as one of the fundamentals of our beautiful religion is that it is an extending religion. Meaning that we don't just stop. If we know the truth, we stop and we say khalas. No, we have to pass on that truth to the people around us, to the non-Muslims, to the generations after us. And this is one of the greatest acts of worship is that we do da'wah, da'wah to Islam, da'wah to the truth moving people from darkness to light. And today we will talk about the first step in Islamic history in da'wah and how the Prophet Sallallahu took that step and he was the first person who gave da'wah to the world and how he started it and how we should start it. Now, as I mentioned before, that the period of Mecca there was a period of Mecca and period of Medina in Islam. And the period of Mecca was divided into two parts, secret da'wah and public da'wah. And at the beginning, the da'wah was secret. Now, <clears throat> it is well known that Mecca was the religious center for the Arabs because the Kaaba was there and pilgrimage was an act of worship was that was left from the time of from the time of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam and of course it was altered it became with idols and shirk and worshiping idols but they still did the the tawaf as we know and the Kaaba was filled around it idols everywhere 360 idols inside, outside. Now, we mentioned earlier that the Prophet وسلم, after he received the first revelation, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق, Allah Azza wa Jal ordered him to do da'wah. يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُدَّثِّرِ قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ Wake up and stand up and warn the people. Warn the people. So the Prophet ﷺ initiated the sacred mission right from home. Who did he first give da'wah to? Khadija radiallahu anha. He started from the close to the close. And this is something that we have to also stand and reflect upon. That the first person who accepted the haqq in Islam was a woman. And the first person that accepted the Islam, uh, accepted the truth, which is Islam, was his wife. And we have to apply that also in our lives. When you want khair, when you want to give nasiha, when you want goodness for people, don't look outside. Look inside first and give the nasiha and the goodness and the advice and anything that good that you want to share, give it to your, your wife first the people who are close to you, your family. This is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. He gave it to Khadija Radiallahu Anha. And this is also evident that, you know, some people out of Islam, يعني, they say a woman by default is evil. Sallallahu Alaihi How How is that? A woman is a human being and she is honored and valued and respected in Islam. And that is why Allah Azza wa willed, willed, that the first person to support uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and honor this da'wah was a woman. Was a woman. And as I mentioned er also before that, or in another class, I mentioned that Aisha Radiallahu Anha was a great scholar of Islam. She was a scholar, she was a mufti. And so Islam did not come to disrespect or degrade or uh, humiliate women. On the contrary, it came to respect and honor and value women as a, 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 a valuable member of society. 
that creates generations. Then it was the freed slave Zayd ibn al-Haritha. He was one of the people, the, the freed slaves that accepted Islam. And he was young. And Zayd ibn al-Haritha has a very interesting story. Zayd ibn al-Haritha was actually a slave. You know, slavery was normal back then. They buy and sell. There's market for slavery, like Carrefour, you know. Slaves here and there and they buy things. So Zayd ibn al-Haritha was bought from where? From Syria. From places in Syria back then. It was there. Hakim ibn uh, ibn Khuwaylid. He was the nephew of Khadija radiallahu anha. He came from Syria or Dimashq. And he bought with him, he bought a slave, Zayd ibn al-Harith, ibn al-Haritha. And he came to Khadija radiallahu anha and he told her, uh, he was, uh, there were a number of slaves, and he said, pick one slave for you. So she chose Zayd ibn al-Haritha. And subhanAllah, this is from the honor of Allah that he was picked and he was given the opportunity to be in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the message. Before the revelation. And he lived with the Prophet. ﷺ. And when the revelation came, he accepted the he accepted Islam. As a matter of fact, Zayd ibn al-Haritha, the Prophet adopted him. So he freed him, he wasn't a slave anymore, and then he adopted him. They used to call him Zayd ibn Muhammad. Then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in the Quran that adoption is not allowed in Islam. Adoption is not allowed in Islam. قال الله عز وجل ادعوهم لآبائهم هو أقسط عند الله. Call them to their fathers. It is more fair and it is righteous. Some people misunderstand when we talk about uh, adoption. Adoption is in Islam is prohibited, but don't mix it with helping orphans and sponsoring orphans. Kafalat al yatim. This is different. When we talk about adoption, is when you legally claim that this person is your son or your daughter. Yani papers, everything says this is your son. Islam is based on the truth, not on ambiguity or you know lying or changing your lineage. You came from a person, Islam wants to preserve that. So that's why. Allah Azza wa Jalla said that ud'uhum li aba'ihim. Don't claim that he is your son. No, he is Zayd ibn al-Haritha, not Zayd ibn Muhammad. So that happened. So he changed it to Zayd ibn al-Haritha, back to his original father's name. His father was looking for him and he knew that he was in Mecca. So he went, uh, Zayd's father, he went all the way to Mecca looking for his son. And he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the house of Khadija. And he said, I have a son. His name is Zayd. And I want him. He's my son. I miss him. His mother misses him. So he said, which one is your son? They brought him. Zayd, this is your father. Come meet your father. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, take him. He's your son, of course. The Prophet will not take his, his, uh, a son that's not his. So Zayd ibn Haritha said to his father, I want to stay with the Prophet. I don't want to go. And this is subhanAllah, one of the, يعني, the, we say, one of the essence or the reflection of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. People would love him more than their fathers. And people would stay with them more than their fathers. This is something that is exclusive to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam. And so, Muhammad, our Prophet, said, if you want to stay, stay. I don't have a problem. He allowed him. So Zayd stayed with his father and he told his father, uh, this man, Muhammad, has a sha'an, has something in him. I want to stay with him. He's baraka, he's blessed. So he stayed with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's from the freed slaves that were, that accepted Islam at the beginning. Who else accepted Islam at the beginning? Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib, 
He accepted Islam. Of course, he was the cousin of the Prophet Who was his father? Abu Talib, the, the uncle of the Prophet who, who we all know that helped the Prophet in his da'wah. So Ali was 10 years old when he accepted the, accepted Islam. 10 years old, young, young boy. And he never worshipped an idol before in his life. He never worshipped an idol. He never worshipped a sanam, anything like that. He never associated something with Allah. He was still young. And so he accepted also Islam. And he was also living with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was narrated by Al-Hakim Fil Mustadrak that why did Ali live with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because Abu Talib, I don't know if you remember this, last week we said Abu Talib was very poor. And that's why he told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, go and seek, uh, go, go, go get work. That's why he worked as a shepherd, then he worked for Khadija. Because he was under the guardianship of Abu Talib. And Abu Talib said, I cannot afford to take care of you, O Muhammad. So go and seek يعني, work and income. And so when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was well off and he got married and everything was okay, he went to Al-Abbas, his other uncle. He said, O oh, uncle, we all know that Abu Talib is not well off and he needs help. We, we'll go to him and each one of us will take one of his sons and we'll take care of them because he cannot afford it. Al-Abbas agreed. So they went to him and each one took a son. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took Ali and he lived with him. So he was living with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also from the men, now from the adults who accepted Islam first was his close friend Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, as siddiq And that's why he was called as siddiq Because he always believed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was the first to believe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also in the, in the story of of Al-Isra' wal Mi'raj. He was the first person, without any doubt, without any shakiness or anything like, hmm, let me think about it, maybe, yes, no. He said, if, if the Prophet said it, he went to Isra' al Mi'raj, that means it's true. And subhanAllah, look at the barakah of Abu Bakr. Barakah means khair. Abu Bakr brought khair with him also. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was a wealthy man. And he had businesses and he had a lot of things. Yani. One of the people who accepted also Islam was Bilal ibn Rabah. The Abyssinian. He's from Abyssinia, Ethiopia now we say. He was also one of the first people who accepted Islam. And from the people who accepted Islam through Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr now started doing shwaya da'wah also. On behalf of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who accepted Islam on, uh, uh, from Abu Bakr, from Abu Bakr's side? Uthman ibn Affan, was Zubayr ibn Al-Awam, and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, and Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, and Talha ibn Ubaidillah. And these were يعني, the first people who established the Muslimin, the Ummah of Islam. These were the first. And many others, many others also followed, uh, slowly started accepting Islam. And this is something that we have to show you reflect upon. Is that we have to hasten in doing good. Allah قال وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّاتٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That when khair comes, hasten towards it. Just like Khadija did. Just like Abu Bakr did, just like Uthman did, Umar didn't, didn't, still, didn't accept Islam later. Ali did, all of these Sahaba, as soon as the da'wah came, they accepted it. And it wasn't easy. Why it wasn't easy? They were living in a place, this was the first thing, they never heard of this before, that they worship only Allah without associating anything. And they reject idols, they reject Kufr, they reject all the culture and traditions of their forefathers and, and, and their city and the people around them, their society. On the spot they rejected that. When Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and gave them the truth and presented to them the new way of life to live now, the new belief. Then slowly and gradually people started 
accepting Islam. People started accepting Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what would he do? He would meet them and teach them slowly about Islam and about how to, what are the, yani the basics of Islam of, and what he knows of. And then, subhanAllah, the revelation started increasing. After, after uh, Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir, and then after Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil, Qum al-Layla illa qalila, then slowly and, and gradually, the revelation started accelerating. And all of the revelations and the ayat that would come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be verses, or we say ayat, don't say verses. Verses, they sometimes they're related to uh, other scriptures. Yeah, so ayat, let's say, don't say verses. One of the mashaykh also told me this. It, verses is not correct. Anyways, ayat and suwar or surahs. They would always, and you, you notice this, the ayat and surahs that were in Mecca time, they were talking about believing in Allah, relying on Allah, yawm al-akhirah, the day of judgment, uh, heaven, hell, how to purify one's soul, how to you know, stay away from shirk. All these things, intrinsic things, core beliefs, would always be, would be revealed in Mecca time. Because now you're building the fundamentals. You're building the fundamentals. This is very, very important. So then of course, what happened is that during that time, Salah was an obligation. But Salah was also an obligation before Isra' wal Mi'raj. They used to pray two, two Salah, two Salah. One in the day and one in the night. One in the day and one in the night. Uh, and this is what uh, Ibn Hajar actually mentioned in, in his book, Fath al-Bari. Allah Azza wa mentioned this in the Quran. وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ بِالْعَشِيِّ وَالْإِبْكَارِ And glorify Allah in the day and in the night. بِالْعَشِيِّ is the night and the ibkar is the day. Sunrise and sunset. Before sunrise and before sunset. وَقَالَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ سَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا Before sun, uh, before sunrise and before sunset. During that time, the Muslims, it was new. And they were doing acts of worship, but they wouldn't do it in front of people. They would go to the mountains somewhere isolated and they pray. And they were play single, furada, yani not jama'ah, not congreg congreg uh, congregational prayer, sorry. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, one day, he decided to pray yani in the city where the people were. But he took a valley, some alleyway, and he was praying there with the other Muslims. Some of the mushrikeen saw them. So they said, what are you doing? What is this? So they started arguing and they started, then they got physical. They started fighting. And Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas grabbed a, a piece of bone and he started hitting the, one of the mushrikeen. And he beat him until his blood spilled. He made him bleed. And subhanAllah, the, the historians and the biographers said this was the first blood spilled for the sake of Allah. <laughs> that he beat him because he was defending himself and defending Islam because he was praying. So this was the first thing that happened. Now at that time, the Prophet wasallam would then decided that they wanted a place to teach people, like a small institute or a school for Muslims. So they decided to sit and gather at the, the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. They would sit there and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would uh, teach them, teach them about Islam, teach them about many other things. Darul Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. And this was the first da'wah center. This was the first da'wah center that Muslims and new Muslims revered, just like we have Islamic Information Center now. <laughs> this is the first da'wah center. It was a place where people gather and learn about Islam. And notice this is very, very important, dear brothers and sisters, that when you want to, even if you're a Muslim or a new Muslim, you want to gain Iman, 
you want to gain something that is good in your religion, start with ilm. Start with seeking knowledge. This is extremely, this is how Islam was built. Islam was not built on fighting, on, on just emotions, on all these things. No. The Prophet ﷺ started with teachings. He presented Islam to them. You accept? Yes. Now let's learn. Because Islam has fundamentals, has shurut, has pillars, has all these kind of things. So it, it's even more important for us Muslims today since ignorance has been spread. You have to learn about your religion. Go back, learn, seek knowledge. And wallahi, this is the channel through you will get your iman. You will raise your iman by seeking knowledge. Tayyib. Now Quraysh and the disbelievers were hearing about this Islam. Islam is a new thing that there's a new movement that's happening. Muhammad is calling for something called Islam. What is this? They didn't really care much about it. They heard about it, but they didn't really care much about it. And uh, they didn't give it much attention. They didn't give it much attention. Until Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a very, very important ayah. وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Now Allah said, and warn your tribe of near kindred. Okay. These verses were from the surah of Ash-Shu'ara. And the surah of Shu'ara came at the early days of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, if you look at the surah, it talks about the beginning of the da'wah of Moses alayhi salam. It talk, talks about how Moses started his da'wah and how he went against Fir'aun and how he gave da'wah to the people of, of Israel and how he ran away or he defied Pharaoh and the, the things that happened to Pharaoh and how Pharaoh was defeated and how Moses was victorious. And also talks to us about Nuh and the people of Ad, wa Thamud, wa Ibrahim alayhi salam, wa Qawm Lut, wa Ahlul Aika, the companions of the wood. All these stories about how the truth was presented and how it was defied and how it was victorious. It's as if Allah Azza wa Jal is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're not the first people before you have done this and this is the best practice. This is how it was done and this is how you should do it. And you will find defiance. People will come against you and people will fight against you. Just like Pharaoh, just like Qawm Lut, just like Qawm Nuh, just like all the other people. So be prepared. It's like Allah is preparing him that it will happen. Tayyib. So, the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ did, and this is from the hikmah, and we have to learn from this. Now he wants to give da'wah to who? Allah said, and warn your tribe of near kindred, near kinship. Yani the close people, people the, fam the family, the tribe, your cousins, your uncles, your aunties, all these people. What did he do? Did he just send them letters? Ya Allah, come to Islam? No. People love food, don't they? He made a big feast. He got, uh, he got lamb, lamb you know, meat, and he gave them leban. Leban is not uh, yogurt. What do you call them in, in Urdu? Lassi? Yeah, not lassi. Leban means milk. Sahih Sheikh Muhammad? Leban yani halib, milk. So he got them all that and they all ate. First, he wants them to yani, calm down and because now he's about to tell them something very, very important and heavy. So you have to do that. So the Prophet wasallam, who came? The big chiefs of Bani Hashim and Bani Al-Muttalib, uh, Ibn Abd Manaf. And the audience counted around 45, 50 men. Big number of people. That was a big feast, huh? Probably cost him a lot, alayhi salatu wasalam. Tayyib. As soon as the Prophet وسلم, started talking now. Now I want to tell you something, guys. Oh, oh, family members. So he started talking. And immediately when he said about Islam and that he is the messenger of Allah, he started saying, oh people, I am the messenger of Allah and we have to worship Allah 
and we have to uh, you know this is a, a religion and Allah gave me with a, with a risala with a, with the message to explain what happened to him while he was talking Abu Lahab who's Abu Lahab Abu Lahab was one of them his uncle he's one of his uncles Abu Lahab immediately he disturbed the prophet disrupted the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's speech and he said these are your uncles and cousins we're your family here speak to the point and you get to the point what do you want to say now but first of all you have to know that your kinspeople are not in a position to withstand all the arabs don't make problems we cannot come and withstand all the arabs you are coming up with something that's going to cause us problems with the other tribes people you must bear in mind that your relatives are sufficient for you we are family why do you want to bring this new thing to us leave us in our kufr as they say if you follow their tradition it will be easier for them than to face other clans of Quraysh supported by the other Arabs so leave us in our in our religion because we don't want problems and we don't want to defy other tribes verily I have never heard anyone who has incurred more harm on his kinspeople than you disrespect subhanallah let him finish didn't allow the prophet to finish imagine 45 people you're planning a feast azima and you gave them food and you gave them milk and you're waiting you just want to say something to them and one man comes and disrupts you and disrespects you and insults you like that and he is on the bottle he is on falsehood and you are on the truth what will you do you'll be angry you say get out of my house get out or anything like that you will you will talk you will take your rights you know what i mean this is us subhanallah the nafs is like that it will enrage how dare he talk to me like that i'm doing all this for them and this is what they say what did the prophet do nothing kept silent hikmah this is something very very important that we have to be mindful of sometimes you will see batil and you will see falsehood and sometimes they will transgress against you but it's not the time stay quiet another battle in another time you will win sabr always Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned sabr many times in the Quran why because nobody has sabr only as illa man rahima rabbuk and when is sabr applied not when you are there is no calamities and no trial sabr is applied when there is a problem when there is a calamity when there is a fitna when someone takes away your rights when someone insults you this is where you apply sabr so here the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept quiet and said nothing perhaps out of respect out of doesn't want to cause fitna reasons what did he do he waited then he invited them again another feast and managed to secure the audience people came again they want food they like food people like food subhanallah and then he stood up and he wanted to deliver a short speech and this is what he said I celebrate Allah's praise inni ahmadullah azza wa jal and I seek his help and I believe in him and I put my trust in him and I bear witness that there is no God worth worshipping but Allah with no associates a guide can never lie to his people I swear by Allah that there is no God but he that I have been sent as a messenger to you in particular yani the Arabs in particular and to all the people in general I swear by Allah that you will die just as you sleep yani death is inevitable it will come and you will be resurrected just as you wake up no doubt and you will be called to account for your deeds yani Allah will judge you for your deeds it is then either hell forever or paradise forever his uncle now the good one Abu Talib replied to the Prophet he told him we love to help you we love to help you O Muhammad and we accept your advice and believe in your words we believe you 
These are your kinspeople, who are your family members, whom you have gathered, and I am one of them. But I am the fastest to do, to do, I am the fastest to do what you like. What do you want, O oh Muhammad? I will do for you. Abu Talib loved him. You know that. He was like his son. So he's like, I believe you and I support you. And anything you want, I will do for you. Do what you have been ordered. Oh, Muhammad, Allah told you to do da'wah. Allah told you to call for Islam. Do it. No problem. I shall protect you. And I shall defend you. Now the part that hurts. What did he say? He said, but I cannot quit the religion of Abu for uh, the religion of Abdul Muttalib. Ya Allah. How, ya yani? You are protecting the Prophet and you are supporting him and you believe him and, 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 and. At the end, you say, I don't want to follow you. I don't want to quit my kufr. Allahu Akbar. This is very heavy. It was heavy on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa His loved uncle. He's doing this, the closest people to him. Then Abu Lahab came. And now he wants to speak. Then he told Abu Talib. What did he tell him? He said, I swear by Allah that this is a wicked thing. This is a wicked thing. This is evil what Muhammad is saying. You must stop him. Don't support him. Stop him. Before others do. If you don't stop him, we are his family members. If we don't catch him and keep him quiet, not saying this thing about Islam and your religion, then others, the Arabs will do. And they will not have mercy on him. This is what he means. Abu Talib, what did he reply? He said, I swear by Allah to protect him as long as I'm alive. I'm going to protect him. I don't care. His aunt Safiya, what did he say? He said, this, he, is your, he is your nephew. Telling Abu Lahab, telling him off. Yani, he's your nephew. Yani, help him. Why would you want to defy him? He's one of you. And we know that there will be a messenger from the Arabs. It's him. Support him. Why would you not? He's an honor for us. But... Kufar is kufar. If somebody wants kufar, he will, you know, his eyes and ears, he's blind. So the majlis was, how much time do we have? 12? Inshallah, we'll finish before that. So the majlis went off. Now the Prophet wasallam still wants to go ahead with da'wah. This wasn't very productive. Like a little bit maybe. But Abu Lahab kept on ruining his, his majlis, his gathering. So he went to as safa the mountain, you know, Safa wal Marwa. He went there and he stood up. And he said, Ya Sabaha, calling, calling the people. And everybody gathered. People gathered. Now oh, Muhammad wants to say something. Come, let's go see what he says. And so the people gathered under him. And of course, Abu Lahab also came. The guy never quits, <laughs> always after. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wara wara. Allah understand. So the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, Ya Bani Fihr, Ya Bani Adi. These are the Quraysh, the clans of Quraysh. Many people, uh, many people gathered around him. Then he said, he told them. He wants to convince them that he is the messenger. He said, you see, if I were to tell you that there is an army people on horses, in the valley, planning to raid you. Me, Muhammad, I'm telling you that there are people, army coming to raid you, to attack you, O Quraysh, from the valley. Will you believe me? They said, yes, we have only witnessed the truth from you. Anta sadiq al amin We keep your, our money with you. Nobody, nobody would doubt that Muhammad would tell a lie or something that is not truthful, or something that is doubtful. He was known, we know this. His reputation was top, 100%, perfect. This is what he's telling them. They said, yes, we have never heard anything but the truth from you. So he said, I am a warner to you before a severe torment. I am a warner, ana munzir lakum. Sorry, somebody just called. <laughs> طيب. Then Abu Lahab على طول, he got up again. Shaytan. What did he say? Perish you all day. Did dua on him. And may Allah destroy you. Perish you all day. Have you summoned us for such a thing? 
You just called us here to say the same thing again? What is this? You know, I got annoyed. And then the verses was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What did Allah say? Tabbat yada abi lahabim. Tabbat yada abi lahabim wa tab. Ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. The ayat. Now, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that kept on giving da'wah in public. Going around Mecca and calling people to Islam. And people, like I said, slowly started yani, coming into Islam. And Allah Azza wa revealed the following ayah, and this is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now had to go more public in Islam. فَاصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Therefore proc- proclaim openly, proclaim openly about Islam, that what you are commanded, you are commanded to now give public da'wah, to everyone, not just to your kins and relatives, everyone. And turn away from the polyists, from the polytheists, from the kuffar. Ignore them. And so then he began worshipping Allah in front of their eyes. In front, in, in the, where the Kaaba is, where the idols, he's doing salah there. Praying aloud in the courtyard of the Kaaba during the daytime while they watched. And all the kuffar are watching. He's doing this new thing. They're not liking it. Something is going on. Then he started what? Disapproving their kufr. Kufr. And idols. And, and all these superstitions that, you, they, that they used to do. You know, the, they used to do a lot of superstitions. And believe into a lot of superstitions. Now he started refuting them. Saying this is shirk. This is haram. Allah doesn't want this, this is not acceptable, etc. All of this resulted in increased acceptance of the call to Islam. People were entering Allah's religion one after the other. Now they are in a big problem. Why? They have a big event. Not Expo 2020, something very similar. They have the pilgrimage that's happening. Of the kuffar, of course. Because it was few months and the pilgrimage would happen. And all of the Arabs would come to, to Mecca. Now the Arabs coming and they want to worship the idols. And this is a highlight of, of Mecca. It's a big event happening every year. And our Prophet ﷺ is calling to Islam and he's you know, creating division and, and you know, it's, it's something that Quraysh was not known for. And Quraysh was known for kufr, <laughs> for shirk. This guy is coming with tawheed, he's going to ruin our reputation. We don't want this. So they made a committee. A committee to discuss how can we tackle this problem. Tourists are coming. We have an event. We have to be prepared. And the Prophet ﷺ is calling for tawheed. And we don't want that. We want kufr and shirk. So now came the story of Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, one of the chiefs of Quraysh in Mecca. They gathered with many people and they said, we have to defy this, this call to Islam, this new religion. So first they said, you know what? Let's spread the rumor that he's a kahin, soothsayer. Kahin. Kahin means like a fortune teller. Kihana. He's a fortune teller. Let's spread that rumor that he's a fortune teller so people will not listen to him. People coming for religious tourism to do kufr and shirk, to do prostrate to asnam. And so we will drive them away from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then they said, he's, it won't sound very convincing. He's not a kahin. He's not a fortune teller. He's not saying anything of, you know, of the future. He's just telling us to worship Allah. It's not gonna, they're not going to buy it. It's not convincing. So what do we say? So call him Majnoon. Let's say he's Majnoon. He's crazy. Or he's possessed by jinn. Also some people said, no, that's not a good idea. Because he doesn't have any kind of weird habits. You know, people who are crazy, you know he's crazy. He's probably hit himself on the wall or walk around naked or something, you know. <laughs> 
crazy people. They do unpredictable things. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't like that, like that. He was the most sane of people and the most wise of people. Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Then they said, what should we do? He said, say he's a poet. Sha'ar. Then also some people said, no, no. He cannot be a sha'ar because he's not speaking like sha'ar. And the Arabs know what sha'ar is. They know what poetry is. They will know that this guy is not a poet. Bad idea also. So what do we do? So he said, Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira said, okay, then let us accuse him of practicing sorcery, sihr, magic. And this was the fourth suggestion. Here also Walid showed some reluctance, saying that the Prophet ﷺ was never known to have involved himself in the practice of blowing into knots, you know, doing sihr, nafth. He was known, not known for that. People knew that he's not like that. So maybe it's not very convincing. But anyways, they said, let's go on with that. We'll just spread around that Muhammad is a sahir. And Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the following ayah. إِنَّهُ فَكَّرَ وَقَدَّرْ فَقُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ ثُمَّ قُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ ثُمَّ نَظَرْ ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَسَرْ ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ وَاسْتَكْبَرْ فَقَالَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ يُؤْثَرْ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرْ سورة المدثر Here Allah Azza wa Jal means Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira How he conspired with the chiefs and the disbelievers of Quraysh that they want to destroy his reputation. Destroy his reputation. And subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during uh, the, the pilgrimage, he would walk around in the valleys and the alleys and he used to say, Say La ilaha illallah, you will be saved. Say La ilaha illallah, you will be saved. And who comes behind him? You wanna guess? Abu Lahab, again. <laughs> He's walking, Abu Lahab is behind him. Don't believe him, he's crazy. Don't believe him, he's a magician. Don't believe him, he's a... Uh, this, he's calling him names. Subhanallah. And the people of course would get... Some people would get doubtful, some people would listen to him, would believe him. And Ahlul Batil, the people of falsehood, no, this is a fact. People of falsehood will always refute or refer back to insults and canceling reputations. Ahlul Batil are like that. Because they don't have haqq. What are they going to fight you with? So Quraysh, what did they do? They attempted or they ref, re, uh, referred to cheap means acting from base of motive. So they were taunting him, degrading him, insulting him, ridiculing him, laughing at him, doing all these things. So the attempts that were taken by the kuffar of Quraysh to destroy or to distort the message of Islam at the beginning is that first they were taunting him, ridiculing him, degrading the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, insulting him, laughing at him. And they used to call him names. Wallahi, they, sometimes they accuse him of he is possessed by a jinn or he is crazy. وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الذِّكْرُ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ You are crazy. And then they accuse him of witchcraft or sorcery. And then insulting him, saying yani low things. And they, and they, the Arab pagans, wonder that a warner has come to them from them amongst, among themselves. And the disbelievers would say he is a sorcerer and a liar. And they used to see him and they, يعني, in their eyes, there would be hate against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As it was mentioned also in the Quran, وَإِن يَكَادُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرَ وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ That they are looking in their, with their eyes, almost they want to hurt him. They want to attack him. There's hatred in their eyes. And they say, verily, Muhammad is a madman he's crazy also one of the things they wanted to do to our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is distorting the muhammad's message and teaching by creating doubts shubuhat creating doubts and circulating false propaganda how they used to say allah has mentioned this in the quran 
قال الله أساطير الأولين اكتتبها فهي تملى عليه بكرة وأصيلا These are tales of the ancient which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has written down and they dictated to him morning and afternoon. People are telling him this stuff to say it. وقال الله عز وجل إن هذا إلا إفك افتراه وأعانه عليه قوم آخرون This is a lie and nothing but a lie that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has invented and others have helped him in it. And you know brothers and sisters that the Arabs, they used to travel. One of them is Al-Nidr ibn Harith. He was one of the biggest enemies of Islam. That guy was filthy, evil. And he would travel. He went to Persia. He went to Damascus. He went to the... He went everywhere. And the Arabs used to go everywhere. But they used to circulate or spread this propaganda that the Prophet ﷺ is bringing this from other religions. You're bringing it from Christianity. You're bringing it from Judaism. You're bringing it from Persia. Imported ideas. If that was the case, they would, caught, they would have caught him because they go there and they see what they are saying. It wasn't like that. What he was saying is not compatible with what they were calling for. Shirk and worshipping the cross and worshipping Jesus and, and worshipping the fire, you know, al-Majus in Persia. It wasn't nothing like that. So how would he get things from that? It was something pure and unique. This Nidr, an, an, an Nidr ibn al-Harith, or Nidr ibn al-Harith, he went to Iraq, al-Hira, fil Iraq. And he, that time, it was ruled by the Persian Empire. And he would collect the stories of Persians, of Romans, of stories of other countries. And he would spend money, travel all the way there, coming back to collect stories, to tell the people and to destroy the message of Islam. Every time Muhammad وسلم, would come and say something about Islam, he would come in the medals and say stories. You know, just to change the subject, just... So people don't listen to Islam. Don't listen to the Prophet sallallahu And he would say, my stories are better than his call. I'm telling you stories imported from many countries. I'm getting you something that is valuable. You will never hear about. And what would he do? He would hire two female singers and just sing and do music to destroy, the, to, to distort the message of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ would call to Islam, they would come and they start singing and dancing and doing all these things. SubhanAllah. And this is what we see today. Ahlul Batil who hate Islam. Some of them, SubhanAllah, they, call, they are called Muslims. But they call against Islam. They, they call them reformists. You know, the people who wants to give you a customized religion. They say this Islam ancient, not good. We'll change it. We'll twist it and change it so it fits who? The West. It fits them, so now it's good Islam. A'udhu Billah. Islam is, is divine from Allah. It cannot be changed. Anybody who comes and changes it, then he's the, the shaitan, he's devil. Because it's divine from Allah Azza wa Jal. And in this, in this uh, period, when another Ibn Harith would send these musicians and girls dancing and singing and doing music, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the ayah. Ibn Abbas said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ that and of mankind is he who purchases the idle talk to mislead men from the path of Allah. Ibn Mas'ud said, Wallahi innahu al-ghina. Wallahi, this is music. And it was revealed when another would send these women to play music to keep Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam away from the call of Islam. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud also mentioned the same thing. And this ayah is used and it is Dalil evidence that music in Islam is not allowed. Musical instruments in Islam is not allowed. And this is by Ijma' of course. The four madahab they say this. Allah al-Musta'an. Tayyib, Taban, another ibn al-Harith, like I said, he was one of the enemies of Islam and he died, it was narrated, but the, the narration is a bit weak, that he died in the Battle of Badr. In the Battle of Badr, and the Prophet 
يعني uh, despised him because of the hate that he had for the Prophet and for the Sahaba and for the and for Islam. He would constantly spend money and time and effort and hire people just to attack Islam and to try to destroy Islam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. طيب let's stop here insha'Allah and uh, insha'Allah next week we will uh, we will talk more about the da'wah and how Quraysh and the kuffar of Quraysh retaliated and what they did uh, to stop Islam. هذا ما عندي والله أعلم وصلي اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.